I made a video a couple days ago about this little fixture I made to mark these parts. At the time I didn't have the parts because they were off being anodized, but now I got them back and I need to mark them. So the idea with this fixture is that I just drop the part onto these two bosses and it'll align three parts at a time for quick laser marking and I don't have to worry about positioning errors. So when I finally put this on my little platform here and I exported a sketch from my CAD model as a DXF and I imported it into EasyCAD and I intended to take the sketch and align it to these bosses. So it's a projection of these bosses onto a sketch and then all I'm going to do is light that thing up just like this and you can see it there and then I'm going to put it right over the bosses and then I can say that's where I'm marking and you can see right there that's pretty close you know within I don't know a few I couldn't say what the actual dimension is but it looks pretty good to me it was not like this a few minutes ago and I didn't realize that I had uh, I guess they call it distortion in your laser field but it took me a while but I figured out how to fix that and it's actually fairly straightforward, but it's just a little bit odd to uh, work with the parameters and make the adjustments you need. So I'm gonna quickly go through what I did. I kind of took my parallels off the table and I sort of started from scratch. I made sure I was in focus for a half inch, which is about what this is. And then I drew a square on EasyCAD and I drew it to my marking field of 150 by 150. And I got a sacrificial piece of aluminum in this case, it's an old fixture plate. So here's the bottom of it. And you can see I sort of marked a few squares on it. And I found out if you go to this parameter button at the bottom of the screen, you can see on the field tab, there is a scale number here and a scale number here. Now, first note that I have my field size at 150. That's my marking field for this lens. And you can see there are two radio buttons next to Galvo 1 equals X and Galvo 2 equals X. So here you're assigning the x-axis to one of the galvos. So you'll need this because down here it doesn't say anything, but this is the x-axis because you assign galvo 2 as the x-axis. This over here is the y-axis. So what you do first is, I guess you would start with a value of 100, so 100% scale. And you would go here and basically you start by drawing a rectangle and my field's 150. I think what the number that was in here was 120, so I think that's probably where the manufacturer started. So at first I had 150, but it was a little bit too big and I couldn't get a decent mark and I couldn't get a decent measurement. So I actually ended up going into Illustrator and drawing a bunch of different squares to different sizes. You can see here I kind of labeled them. And what I would do is highlight a square and I drew this one to 120. I eventually got something a little bit smaller than my max marking area because it seemed like that was easier to work with but still big enough that it wasn't something way inside. So I drew a square, sent it to the origin in EasyCAD, and I light it up. And what I would do, this is supposed to be uh, 120. So let's put it on the 120 right now. And I'm gonna focus on this point as my origin. So that's kind of my zero, zero down at the bottom left. And I would try to just cut the middle of this line with my x-axis. So that's relatively close and you can see I'm a little inside of my lines so I may still have a little bit of air but as long as I can get on top of these I don't think I'm gonna kill myself to get it absolutely perfect but that's how I started and it was way beyond 120 at first I think I actually when I marked it it would measure to something like 142 in Y and 132.5 in X. So you start not by using the scale, but that's just kind of a starting point to see what you're looking at. So you go to this parameter button and you have these, first set the scale to 100 on both of these. So just change this number to 100. I'm not gonna do it right now. Well, I can, I guess I can. I have these numbers. So 100 and 100 and all of these numbers will be one. So these are how you can distort your marking fields. All right, so if I say okay to that, and I choose this 120 millimeter field, and I light it up, now you can see this is huge. So I'm way beyond my 120. If I set this on the 120, you can see, I can try to set the x-axis line straight. It's pretty straight. 
the y-axis is way beyond the 120 so this is uh, beyond 90 degrees here and you can see I've got some skew here so a little bit of a bubble on our uh, Y lines and maybe a little bit of an inner uh, it's a little concave up on this top Y so I started by trying to take those out so these adjustments here this is to the Y this is to the X think of this as just adjusting the Y lines on this side and just adjusting the, the X lines on this side so if you increase this number and I think the values you can increase to or you can shrink them to or increase to 0.875 and 1.125 that's your max and min for all of these adjustments so if you make this number on Galvo 2 larger what you can do is get rid of a bubble forming on the Y lines and it's exactly the same for the X or the Y axis. So as I was editing this video I realized it was a little bit meandering and a little bit confusing so I want to go back and summarize this without showing all of the adjustments I made. Basically you just have to remember that Galvo 2 is your X axis and Galvo 1 is your Y axis. This is your adjustment up here to get rid of any concave or convex lines whether they're on the X or Y axis. This is the adjustment if you have a parallelogram forming so you can either send your lines to the left or the right and this is the trapezoid, so if you have a mismatch in your top and bottom line in terms of the actual dimensions. So after you adjust this on, let's say in my field, it's a 150 millimeter field and I'm marking a 120 millimeter box. Remember, you're doing this, you're adjusting for distortions prior to setting this scale up here. So you're doing this at a 100% and my box I'm marking is 120 millimeters. So I'm making these adjustments regardless of the size, but I'm kind of using that grid I printed from uh, Illustrator that they give me a rough idea of where I actually stand in terms of you know being square from one line to another. So I found it helpful. I'm guessing somebody else is going to come up with a much simpler way to do this. And uh, it's a little bit confusing. You kind of have to go back and forth. And I think you just kind of have to accept something that uh, is pretty darn close to an actual square. Because there will be some distortion no matter what, I think, because you're always marking from a center point and kind of aiming your laser out uh, from that center point. And uh, I would say make very, very small adjustments to these numbers as you go and just kind of do a guess and check and say, did I like that change or did I not? And it's, it's relatively self-explanatory, but it is a little bit of a tedious process. So after you do this distortion uh, and you're pretty happy with the square you have, what you do is you just mark your square. So that's when you bring out your sacrificial piece of material and you're going to mark your 120 by 120 square. So, and then what you would do is take a caliper or a ruler, whichever you can read pretty darn well, and measure from this lower left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner, and that'll be your X number. <clears throat> so as soon as you have that number, you go in here and you go to Galvo 2, because that's our X axis, and you say desired marking size, so we mark to 120 millimeters, and the actual marking size, I believe I measured something like 132.5 millimeters. So you say that, and then it'll automatically scale it down to whatever it needs to be. And you do the exact same for the X. So what I did was I measured from this point up to the top point up here, and I got a much larger number. It was like something 142 point something. So it doesn't matter, 142.5. Oh, sorry, that's the scale, 100. So 120 was the marking size, and it actually measured something like 142.5. So you say OK to that, and it scales it down. So then you say OK to this, and hopefully your distortions haven't changed, and you've scaled it down, so you should be marking the correct size. So to this, you say OK. And what you can do now is light up your box again, and then you can mark it once more, and then you take your caliper or your ruler out again and do the exact same measurements. And if you like those, then that's good. You can move on. But I also checked uh, the length of this top line. And if there is any change there, I think you can, you can probably still make minor adjustments to uh, maybe this number if you have a little bit of a skew. It's, it specifically says in the EasyCAD manual to make your adjustments to, the, to any kind of field distortion prior to setting the scale. So I hope that wasn't incredibly confusing. I hope that's kind of helpful. And uh, if anybody has a much better way of doing this or a much faster way of doing this or a step one, two, and three that might be a little more clear than what I did, then feel free to share it because it would probably be helpful.